Okay, today we have a tricky looking integral. This one's from the Florida Integration B 2016, problem 12. We have the integral from zero to one of cosine natural log x squared minus cosine natural log x over x ln x dx. Okay, the thing I noticed first here is that we've got, we've got natural log x pretty much everywhere. This one right here, natural log x squared is a little different, but with log properties, I can bring the two out front and we can look at this one as just two ln x. So let's see if we can clean all this up with a u substitution. We can start with u equals natural log of x. But what I want to do instead, just a little different, is let's do u equal to minus ln x. That way, what's going to happen is instead of having the bounds go to minus infinity, they'll go to infinity. You might not need to do this, but I kind of prefer it this way. Then, of course, we can rearrange it with the minus sign, and we can write this as minus u equal to natural log x get a value solving for x, we have x is going to be equal to e minus u. And because we have this x over here, I can look at this as 1 over x. Let's take the derivative on the first one here. So for du, we're going to have minus 1 over x dx. So in order to set this up, let's kind of create here, if I multiply in a minus sign here, this will be like the minus 1 over x dx for our du. And then I don't want to change it, so let's just multiply a minus here on this one. So going ahead with the substitution, first we'll update our bounds, plugging a one in here. This is gonna be natural log of one, zero. So that's gonna be our upper bound. Then plugging in zero, natural log at zero is gonna be minus infinity times minus. And so that's gonna make this positive infinity. Then for this first one, technically this would be cosine, with the tube right out front, this would be cosine minus two u, but cosine's an even function. So I can just kind of get rid of that minus sign, change that to a plus. And again, same kind of thing here. This is going to be cosine minus u, but it's an even function, so we'll get rid of the minus. Here, this minus ln x is just going to be a u, and everything else is going to be our du. Then from here, let me reverse the sign on this and like bring a minus sign out front. But really, I'm just going to use that minus sign to flip the bound so we can have the infinity on top. Now, what we have here is kind of a problem. Now, if you split this up into two integrals, there's a few things. The integral of cosine u over u for the indefinite integral of cosine u over u, or even cosine 2u over u, you can't really do the indefinite integral in terms of standard functions. So both these individually are a problem if it was an indefinite integral. But actually, even with these bounds, if you split it up, neither of these integrals converge. So at this point, you may think we need to give up because the whole integral is going to be divergent. But actually, even though separately these integrals diverge, together we can actually do this. And so the way I know how to do this is actually with Feynman's trick. And so I'm just gonna make a little space for that. This is actually really similar to a video I did where we had like sine of x over x, same bounds from zero to infinity. So what I'm gonna do for Feynman's trick is we'll create this as a function. I think I'm gonna use the variable s. So when we do this, we'll have all the same stuff, but I'm gonna create a parameter. I need something with this variable s. And what I'm gonna do for this, I'm gonna create e to the minus su. And so the reason I can do this without changing it is we can think about what happens when s is zero, then we have e to the zero or just one, so it's gonna be the same thing. So really, we wanna find the value of this thing, and this is actually just gonna be our f of zero value. And then the other thing I want here is I need some value of s where we can evaluate this later. The thing that's gonna work is if you think about when s is going to infinity, then this part's gonna be zero, and it's gonna kinda of wipe out everything else. So I know you can't really have f of infinity, but if you think about this as a limit, as s is going to infinity, the whole function, the whole integral is going to get zeroed out. So we can use this one later. And so from here, what I want to do is we want to find the derivative. We want to, we want to differentiate this with respect to s. So we want f prime of s. And so what we want to do is differentiate this whole thing here with respect to s. And so how I want to do this is let's differentiate inside the integral. And what I can do is write this here as a partial. And now when I differentiate with respect to s, you'll notice everything over here, this is all, there's no s over here. So this whole thing with respect to s is just a constant value. So I can just focus on the derivative of this. But then differentiating this, you're just going to get e minus su, then chain rule on the exponent, which is going to be just minus u. But now that this minus u came out, this is exactly what we want, because then we can use that to just cancel the u in the denominator. We still have this minus sign here. What I can do is use this to just flip the sign back on this here, over here. And then at this point, we can actually break this up into two integrals on this minus sign, one with cosine 2u times e minus su, the other one cosine of u e minus su. 
But what's going to happen is this is actually going to be two Laplace transforms. It's exactly set up with everything. It's set up perfectly with the right bounds and everything. So actually the first one with cosine 2u, this one is actually going to be Laplace transform of cosine 2u. And then for the second one, this is actually just going to be the same kind of thing, Laplace transform of cosine of u. And so this here, we can just use our Laplace transform formula for cosine of say a t, and this is actually just gonna be s squared plus a squared with an s in the numerator. So using this, so using this for the first part, our a value is gonna be a two, so this is gonna be s over s squared plus a squared, which is gonna be just four. And then for the second one, we're gonna have minus s over s squared. Coefficient here is just a one, so we're gonna have a plus one here. And so now that we have our value here for f prime of s, we can just use this, get it back to f of s, and then we can finish it off. Okay, now here that we have our f prime of s value, we want to get back to f of s because our goal really, our solution is going to be this f of zero. So we need, so we need a simplified formula for f of s in order to plug in a zero and get the final answer. So we're going to need to get back to a function in terms of s in order to plug in a zero and finish it. So what I can do over here is if I just, we can just integrate on both sides with respect to s. And so when we integrate this derivative, this thing right here, this is going to be our f of s. But what we have here is two pretty easy integrals. What I can do is if I multiply in a 2 on the s in both cases, I could break it into two integrals, but I think we see what's happening, so we'll just leave it together as 1. So we multiply 2 in here. I don't want to change it, of course, so let's multiply by 1 half in front. Then each of these are perfectly set up for a u substitution. Like if I made this my u, then our du is right here. Again, I'm gonna kind of do this quick, so we could do this one. If this one, we want to call this one V, then this right here would be our DV. So we'll go ahead and integrate, just kind of doing this substitution in our head. We have the one half out front. For the first one, this is gonna become natural log. I'm gonna drop absolute value because this is always gonna be positive. So we'll have natural log S squared plus four. And then for the second one, we're gonna have minus natural log of just S squared plus one. And of course, we're gonna need a plus C on the end of this. But now one thing I can do with log properties because we're subtracting here, I could turn this into division and write this as, get rid of this and write this as natural log s squared plus four over s squared plus one. And now we basically have our f of s function right here. The only problem is I don't really want this plus c on it. Well, that's where we can go back and we can use this value that we found at the beginning where we can use this to get rid of our plus c or find out what plus c is gonna be. So if we look at what happens when s is going to infinity, I know this is not really good notation, but I'm just doing this uh, shorthand. So like s is going to infinity, we plug it in here. What's gonna happen is you're gonna have one half. This is gonna become natural log of one as a limit plus c. Natural log of one is just zero. We're saying this value from what we found originally, it needs to be zero. So what that means is that our c value also must be zero. And I'll just get rid of this right here. So now that we have our f of s value, all we need to do is come back and we need to find f of zero. So we just need to plug in zero here. So for f of zero, we're gonna have one half. Plugging in zero whenever we're here, we're gonna have natural log zero plus four is four. Zero plus one, that's just gonna be a one. But I can take this and bring it into the exponent and take the square root of four. And so for my final solution to this, we just have natural log of two. Okay, there you have it. Good one from Florida, 2016. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.